Hi gang, it's JC and this is the Daily Dose for Friday, February 18th, 2011. A combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful town down Brentwood. We have archives at the top of the page. Some great old uh, TV pieces that we've accumulated over the, well, like 25 years. There was a point at which I had uh, nine VCRs in the house and pretty much they were running all the time and I never threw any of those VCR tapes out. And, and I never really knew what they were going to be good for until this website came along. And then I figured, well, let's take some of this stuff. It's got a bunch of old commercials, you know, some old Sliman Brothers commercials, some old Bob Richards weather forecasts, uh, old uh, uh, interview pieces that I did for Channel 4 and Channel 5 and eventually Channel 2. So all of that stuff is up there on uh, the Wayback Machine and uh, other features that we have up there, the Video Village. And then along the bottom here we have JC's Eye Candy, and that's real simple to explain because every day we just try to do some sort of a viral video or a cool picture or something like that. It's just been a very surreal week, just a very, very odd week. You had the Stan Musial thing, which was just odd for me because it brought back a lot of memories of my childhood, vivid memories of my childhood, because I saw Stan play. I started going to Wrigley Field when I was only about four years old, late 50s into the early 60s, and I saw Stan Musial play, and I remember watching the 3000th hit on TV on WGN in Chicago because it was uh, televised. Um, at that time, I came home from school and watched that ball game. So um, that was just a weird day on Tuesday, and then that was followed with all this uh, the, the theater uh, involving Albert Pujols, and not only Albert himself, but also the media reaction to the whole thing with everybody buzzing around like crazy. It's just been a weird week. Then you throw in the weather, it was 76 degrees yesterday, Thursday, which is uh, you know reminding us that uh, in two weeks we'll be halfway through our uh, I think we're doing, what, four shows from Cardinal Spring Training, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Monday, the first week and then into the second week of March. So that's weird. And then on top of that, Trish Gazelle was infected by her husband, Fast Eddie, with some sort of flu or upper respiratory infection or something. And so she's been out for the whole second half of the week. And uh, yesterday was just weird. I mean, you work with somebody every day for eight years in close quarters, um, and then uh, you don't really see much of them for about a year. And then all of a sudden you look across and there she is sitting at the microphone in exactly the same place, almost the exact sort of environment. I'm talking about Laurie Mack, who is a part of the carousel of co-hosts, you know, because we have uh, uh, Eric Mink on Tuesday and we got Smash on Friday, but we've added Laurie Mack to that. So she's in every Monday now on the big 550 KTRS, but it's just a really mind-blowing experience to just look across there. And a couple of times I almost said the call letters of the old station because that's how... Um, <laughs> it was just a, it's just a weird week, I'm telling you. It's just a weird, weird week. All right, uh, everybody's, I think at this point, already sick, or at least they say they're sick, of hearing about and talking about the Albert Pujols situation. But then if you go to the websites and you go to the newspaper website and some of the sports websites, you see that it is the most searched or the most read story of the day, and this is going on a week now. So people might say they're getting tired of hearing about it, but... Uh, their actions on their very own laptops are indicating otherwise. And all I can tell you is that when Bill DeWitt went up there two days ago, uh, I was like, ew, this doesn't sound very good. And it also doesn't sound very good just in terms of Albert's PR. And I'm thinking to myself, is Albert going to get booed on opening day? Is that what this is going to turn out to be if this deal isn't done by then? Because it's certainly isn't looking like it is, but then... You know, I think Albert came up yesterday and said a lot of really interesting things, not the least of which is a lot of what's being said and talked about, it's, 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 it's like everything else. It, it, people are oftentimes talking about things they have no idea. They're picking up rumors and just repeating stuff. I know that I've certainly been on the receiving end of that a lot over the last 27 years. So you got to remind yourself that oftentimes uh, people don't have the first friggin' idea what they're talking about and... They are under the pressure of news producers and news directors and editors and publishers and stuff like that to get stories. And so they'll take a little smidgen of something and just like run with it. And uh, it's not until the principles in the equation, that would be Albert in this particular case, steps forward. And I have a tendency to believe Albert when he says, you know, it's like four people who know what's going on. There was some situation where he and his family went somewhere for a weekend 
and it was rumored that they were, you know, off having secret contract negotiations. And Albert said, I was with my family. We were laughing, going, what? We just took the kids to go swimming or something at a resort. And it's, it's just unbelievable. So we forge ahead now with the national show business and entertainment news, which oftentimes can be funnier than anything. And then sometimes people think stuff like this is funny because Rod Stewart is 66 years old and he just became a father again. His 39-year-old wife, Penny Lancaster, gave birth to a baby boy on Wednesday. They also have a 5-year-old together. Rod's oldest kid is a daughter who is 47, which is 8 years older than his current wife. You go, Rod, you go. All right. People, I think, um, we've reached a point in this uh, society, if you will, where we believe all the stuff we shouldn't believe, and we are skeptical of all the things that we shouldn't be. Uh, I don't trust the government either, but if the government says today is Wednesday, I'm not going to say, you're full of baloney. And that's a lot of what we're running into, and that's now spilled over to the entertainment world, because everybody always wants to say, like, okay, somebody gets paired together uh, on a, a reality show or a game show or something like that. And, of course, right away they got to be doing it. And so when Cheryl Burke was paired up with uh, the NFL stud Chad Ocho, Ocho Cinco, uh there were some rumors going, oh, you know, they're doing it. Well, it turns out they were about that. And she's finally copped to the whole thing. And I mention this because we're having her on the air next week, and I got lots of questions from Miss Cheryl Burke from Dancing with the Stars. All right, so Survivor starts another uh, season, if you will, although they are deliberately trying to make you believe that they have been around longer than they have. They call it their 22nd season. Well, the show's been on, what, like 11 years, so how do you get 22 seasons? Well, it's because they're doubling up uh, every year. Anyhow, Survivor premiered against American Idol for the first time in the history of those two shows. Now, you'll recall that American Idol's been on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, um, up until this year, and then this year, they said, no, we're switching to Wednesdays and Thursdays. And they blew Survivor out of the freaking water the other night. Survivor Redemption Island only attracted 11.2 million viewers. Sounds like a lot, but it really isn't for Survivor and for a show like that. That's an all-time low for a Survivor premiere. In the meantime, you know, all the people who sort of stood there and said, oh, you know, American Idol, they jumped the shark, it's over now because they lost Simon and... I'm telling you, I think these three, Randy Jackson and J-Lo and Steven Tyler, no, you don't hear anybody saying it anymore. Like, oh, you know, American Idol is not going to be as good without Simon Cowell. That thing is just a juggernaut, and that's all there is. Um, by the time you watch this Daily Dose on your very own home computer, uh, we will have already completed our interview with a guy who does these Saturday Night Live backstage shows. And there's another one on Sunday night. We're having the guy Ken Bowser, who does, who does these things for NBC, on the uh, showgram today on the Big 550 KTRS. We're on every day from 10 until 1 o'clock. Uh, but you might want to make a little note that on Sunday night, if you're an SNL fan, that's pretty cool. Saturday Night Live, in the meantime, this week is a rerun with Paul Rudd. This is just awful. In a new survey, more than half of the women say they would happily give up sex for a year if it meant they could be skinny. Oh, when are you guys going to learn? When are you guys going to learn? We don't want you skinny. If you're watching all this stuff, you know, with, with supermodels and on the cover of these women's magazines, they're telling you you got to be skinny. In the meantime, all the guys are saying, no, we like you with a little meat on your bones. When, when, uh, when a woman is wearing a dress, I don't think it should look like it's still on the hanger. But nobody's listening to me. Nobody's listening. All right. Um, the, speaking of Trish, who's been out sick for the whole second half of this week, the average restaurant worker makes less than $15,000 a year, and 80% of them don't get sick days. And I just sort of glossed over that. And then I went back, and I was like, wait a minute. You know what that means? That means when people have the flu, they're taking one hand and rubbing the Vicks Vapo Rub on, and with the other hand, they're preparing your meal. Have a nice day. And it was on this day back in 1998, 13 years ago, that Harry Carey checked out at the age of 83. Um, again, we're going to be uh, down with the Cardinals at the spring training in Jupiter, Florida, in less than two weeks. And, uh, but I just, I just remember how, uh, how really sad it was when Harry Carey checked out at the age of 83. I, you know me, I said this in my second book. And that is that I think, you know, people are always running around, what's the meaning of life? What's the meaning of life? And 
I, I think I've just concluded that the meaning of life is for you to leave memories. And if you're talking about Harry Carey, boy, did he leave memories. And I mentioned this because, you know, an awful lot of people, especially unless you're talking about real old people who remember when Harry Carey was at the top of his game. But most people remember Harry Carey as a slightly and sometimes very doddering grandfatherly old man who would lose track of the score and lose track of who was playing and, and just seemed to be almost disoriented up in the broadcast booth sometimes. But he was funny and people liked the take me out to the ball game and he was like everybody's grandfather. But uh, as you'll recall from hearing on Tuesday, if you were listening to the show, Graham, when we were doing our Stan Musial tribute, when Harry Carey was in his prime, he was a bitchin' play-by-play announcer. He was right on every play. He was exciting to listen to. He was bombastic, and uh, that's why, as Bob Costas often likes to point out, that's why Harry Carey is in the Hall of Fame, because he was good. 83 is when he checked out. That was 13 years ago today. That was sort of a rough month or so for me, because uh, Harry Carey died, and uh, right about the same time, Gene Siskel from Siskel and Ebert, who had become a pretty good friend, he also checked out. So on that happy note, let's move on to uh, eye candy today, which is something very funny with regard to Charlie Sheen. And again, um, there's a lot of people who have had this sort of stuff touch their lives, and they don't necessarily find the Charlie Sheen thing very funny. You know, I mean, I understand that too, but for the rest of us, it's like, what's this clown going to pull next? And uh, we have a We just have a funny picture today. It's actually two pictures, and the second one I think you'll find very funny and probably send to your friends, and you can check that along our bottom strip here on Eye Candy, and that changes every day. All right, have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk to you again on Monday if we're working. I think we're working. It's uh, Washington's birthday or something like that, so if we're not here on Monday, don't panic. We'll be back on Tuesday. I don't know if we're doing one, so I'll check with the guys at Mind Active and find out if anybody's working on Monday. In the meantime, that's it. The Daily Dose for Friday, February 18th, 2011, a combined venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. And in the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye. (laughs) 